going to do something slightly different this episode of the Reed Pile, and we are looking at Baltimore or the Steadfast Tin Soldier and the Vampire, the title of which finally now makes sense to me after having read this. I did buy this years ago. Um, did not read it. I got this after getting into the Baltimore comics. This happens to not be a comic. It is an illustrated novel. So this is where really Baltimore's story starts and it as of yet has not been adapted into a comic. I don't believe it will be now that I've read it and understand what it is, how it works, but um, some of the Magnolia Christopher uh, Golden novels that were done, I mean, uh, Bones of Giants, I think, was first published in 2001, so more than 20 years ago, was adapted into an audiobook and then more recently into a comic. So there is adaptations, there are, I suppose, adaptations being made of the novels into either audiobook or into comics or both in some instances. Baltimore was made into an audiobook. I listened to many audiobooks and I read it that way. So I still haven't physically read this, but I did listen to the audiobook. And I will broadly recommend listen, uh, reading the book instead of listening to the audiobook. There was something about the performer's reading that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And the only way I can describe it really is he read in a very... He read everything very dramatically, which sort of turned into a monotonous tone at some point, And it loses... It's a fact. If everything is dramatic, then really nothing is. So um, I'm going to recommend reading Baltimore rather than getting the audiobook like I did. But I'm also going to say that it is very good and I recommend it. And if you are at all interested in Baltimore, then definitely get this, read it. It is essentially the origin story of Baltimore before he gets into the comic adventures really is somewhat during I believe because it's hard to tell when this is happening uh, later in the story there is a journal and you see here the date is written like this it is without being said World War One I, I believe and I think that is confirmed here in the beginning too with all this sort of copyright stuff so down in here, it actually says, you know, if they're talking about where to sort it into, they actually mention World War I, 1914, and 1918, which is confirmation, in my opinion, um, that this is basically, uh, Lord Baltimore is in World War I. His team gets killed, he is concussed, he wakes up, and there is a vampire eating his leg. From that moment on, everything is different, including the world eventually, but um, there are, the the actual details of that encounter are explained, they are gone into in here, so I'm going to gloss over it now, but basically from that moment on, vampires are awakened, they had always ex existed in the world, but they are awakened at that point, and they are referred to as a plague that is spreading across Europe, presumably the rest of the world, but um, vampires and other monsters awaken during World War One, and that is where um, the timeline diverges. Um, I believe everything up until that point should be the same as our world, but uh, World War One is where it diverges towards the supernatural. So in addition to a world war, there's also a vampiric epidemic that people um, don't understand that it's vampires initially. They just think that it's a plague and that many people are dying. Um, there is a recognition that the supernatural is at play as well and that definitely comes, um, is expanded upon once you get deeper into the comics. There's sort of a global recognition of, hey, this is beyond what we thought it was. But in the early days, it's it's just referred to as a plague. So the core of this is actually three friends and associates of Lord Baltimore meeting up. He tells them where and when to meet 
he is presumably going to meet them there he's late and they are sitting around telling stories as their lives intersected with Baltimore so they have not previously met each other but by their conversations they piece together his life as well as for the audience it's quite well done it's very much enjoyable and I will again recommend reading the physical book not the audiobook it was in my opinion less than it could have been this has also gotten me interested in rereading the books, which is unlikely to happen anytime soon. I've got a backlog of things to get through, but um, I will also recommend the comics, which are great. There are eight of Lord Baltimore, and then there's a new series, possibly, with Lady Baltimore, and um, I won't go into any details or spoilers about what is happening there. But um, it's Baltimore is basically on a um, one-man mission initially uh, to kill the vampire that oh, this guy here, uh, to kill the vampire that he met on that battlefield initially, and a lot happens. It's sort of a Moby Dickish obsession, but um, it does impact everyone around him and sort of the world as, at large as well it's uh, really well done highly recommended I don't think I have anything else to say I want to keep the spoilers to myself I don't want to go into too much detail I don't want to spoil things for you if you are planning to read this at all which again recommended <laughs>